Are we live? Are we live? Uh, we are live! Okay, hey! <laughs> Got in as soon as I could. Sorry I'm late. There's a lot of cool stuff that I have to talk about tonight. And... Let's see... Uh, should I fly over? Let's see if I have to fly over there or get a summon. We'll, we'll find out. Anyway, um, so today's... I, I don't even know if I can call them topics now. Well, actually, uh, first things first. So, I did get permissions on YouTube to post a video that's longer than two hours. And, um, if you see on my Twitch page... Like, okay, basically, in, on my live stream page, I can't, like, record videos longer than a certain amount of time if it goes over a certain... Uh, file size, and I've kind of determined that, that file size is roughly around two hours. Uh, sometimes the live stream will go like two and a half hours, and so what Twitch does is it just cuts off the end of the time and like cuts the file in half and doesn't record it. So um, I put all of my past streams, and, and the other thing is I can only have a limited number of videos per time, so I put all of my past streams on Twitch, or on, that was on the Twitch website onto a YouTube account and you can see the link in the description right underneath my video there should be a, a link on the YouTube um, it's www.youtube.com slash twisted mind wow and twisted mind is actually spelled correctly like twisted mind and not with a Y in mind but that's the YouTube page and then um, you know advertising on the wow forums or just in trade chat is all good and whatever but if uh, you know, you're not in-game or you're not actively checking those, then you're, you miss that. So I have a uh, Twitter account now that is, um, it, it's linked to both my Twitch page and it's also linked to the um, the live stream page. So every time I'm live streaming or anything like that, um, it's going to be broadcast on Twitch. Now, here's what's unique about this week that I wanted to talk about first. Um, a couple things I wanted to go through. I've been kind of playing a little bit of StarCraft recently, so the terms macro and micro have been on my mind. I kind of want to talk about micro and macro this week because I think, and I need to double check this with the other healer, but I think I'm going to be two healing every fight tonight. So that's one thing I want to talk about. The other thing I want to talk about is professions because, um, interesting week this week. I used to be a tailor enchanting. Um, I kept tailoring, but I just dropped enchanting for engineering this week, so that's different. And uh, I can talk about kind of the differences. Now, uh, let's get an advertisement out and trade. Okay. So, I'm an engineer now, and that means that I have this third little icon thing showing up. And what that icon is, is it's, um, it's, it's the same stat bonus that you would normally get. Okay, basically, all right, all the professions, like from a heroic rating standpoint, they're they're all sort of like in one the same. They have um, like a, a stat boost of 80, I think. Yeah, 80 of a primary stat. And then the only exceptions to this rule are tailoring and enchanting are the different professions that are kind of like weird. And insofar that they, they do have that 80 stat bonus, but instead of being something that's a consistent all the time, it's... Um, it's um it's a like the tailoring version of it is a proc so it's like a random Beware. chance but it averages to about one proc per minute and then the um, engineering is an activate now here's the differences kind of between the stat bonuses if you have something that's a static 80 um, that means that in order to get that same sort of over the course of a time 80 stats you would have to use that proc on cooldown like you would have to use that the engineering uh, proc which is synapses springs on cooldown or your tailoring cloak enchant would have to proc pretty much off cooldown um, so uh, so yeah like if, if you're getting those things to proc off, like, off cooldown then you're essentially doing like that same you're, you're doing the same amount of intellect over the course of like a given fight. Now, this proc will gain value on a fight where, say, you have, um, like, you, say, say you have like a fight where it's right 
right before the fight ends or something, you get that extra proc in, you know what I mean? Like, you, you get, like, one more extra intellect proc, then you're getting a little bit more intellect than you would have had over the course of, like, a normal fight, if that kind of makes any sense. So, then, like, only in that circumstance it would gain some value, but the other time it would gain value is, say, like, on Madness, when you're killing a platform, if you're on a far platform and you kill that tentacle limb and you're running to the next platform, while you're running, if that's on cooldown and it's up again for the next platform, it's gaining a little bit of value there because if you had a flat stat increase, like 80 intellect or whatever, while you were running, uh, that 80 intellect stat bonus, in order to be a fully effective on the course of a fight, you need to always be casting. Like, you always need to be using that extra 80 intellect at all times. So, um, that's, that's where this, this, um, bonus gains some value, like, over, over having a static bonus. Now, here's the thing, it will lose, like, tons of value if you don't use it off cooldown. Like, you know, if you, if you wait 10 seconds to use your intellect proc again, hang on, I gotta whisper someone, I can't do this. <laughs> If you wait 10 seconds and you haven't used that intellect proc by the time that 10 seconds is up, then you're you're essentially losing kind of like a fifth of the value of that intellect proc because you didn't use it on cooldown. Um, so with engineering, it's kind of like a... I mean, it, it's a judgment call, and I'll kind of like get in some nuances of why I picked this proc because of this judgment call after I whisper someone. Need to get my advertisements out in a trade. Audio, let me make sure my audio levels are kind of set too. I don't want to be like drowning myself out as I'm explaining all this stuff. I guess another thing that I wanted to do is since I put up my videos on YouTube, some of them have kind of gotten laid with some copyrights, so I'm missing like two videos, I think is what it is. So what I did to sort of like counteract that is I put up like um, on like I guess in this raid in particular, I'm going to try to make that. I, I'm going to try to make up the stuff that I kind of said and kind of like just summarize and condense stuff that I've covered in the last couple weeks, I guess, or the stuff that you won't be able to find on YouTube. And then that way, you, you know, you're not out of luck if you've like never seen my stream before and you're just now tuning in, you're not missing, you know, information that I guess could be potentially vital. I don't know. <laughs> be right back though, because I need to get my headphones to make sure this is set correctly. I literally just got in. Test, 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 test. Let's see how this is balanced. Let's find out I'm being totally drowned out and everything I said during the Morchok fight is lost and gone forever. Okay, it's balanced. Sweet. Which means that it was not in vain talking about all of my professions. Okay, basically the thing that I'm missing now is I'm missing the video where I kind of go over all the class roles. So the TLDR is on Morchok, we split up into two different groups. Um, the DPS timer is so low that if you're having trouble like healing through those explosions, like, um, you know, I mean, it's it's foreseeable in 10 man. You can actually get away with four healing it. We've never done it. I've, we've always two healed it. But I mean, it, I, I've heard it's been done that like four healing it doesn't totally screw you out of it or whatever. So 
Um, so that fight's four healable, and then the way we do it is we have um, Morchok. The f first half of him is tanked, kind of like where he spawns. I'm in that group always. And the way I do it as a disc priest is get bubbles up. Uh, just make sure your group is standing within 20 yards of one another, and make sure that the person who's soaking extra damage, which is usually a melee class, stands right on top of a tank. Uh, now in this, oh, and the other group we have like way off to the side, so we clear the trash that's actually out to the side of the room and tank him as far away as possible. Um, you actually saw in tonight's kill what happens if you don't get far enough away and a thing spawns, then they spawn too close together, someone takes double damage. Um, if you go back in time and kind of look at that stream, the person that was going to take double damage in our group, I think it was Demon Lock, I put a bubble on him. Like I didn't put a bubble on him when he, our crystal exploded and I put a bubble on him later so he would get the absorbed damage. But other than that, um, if you're having DPS problems, you want to stack range classes because they can do DPS during the black phases. Okay, on this fight, uh, you know, we stack up it into two groups, we don't have an assigned dispeller, Beware. and the way we do these spread out around the room during the black phase is we have um, the two range classes, which are both dot classes, D dot cleat, the two tentacles that are where my mouse is hovering right now. We have a direct damage, which is our mage and our um, enhancement shaman go on this side of the room and take care of these two. We have our warrior go out and solo a tentacle by himself, which is... Um, back in behind me, it's the screen. That's where the warrior's uh, soloing of his tentacle is. And then um, the first thing that we burn down is the tentacle that's like right over here, this purple. We just all stack up and burn right there. We don't stand on the claw, but I've heard that you can stack on the claw. So, I mean, that's something to think about. Um, the cooldown rotation, I get my first barrier, which is probably gonna be a problem Beware. here because I just had to dispel myself. Okay, because I kind of fell behind here, I'm just going to blow Divine Hit now. Um, so, okay, I usually get a barrier here, and then Tranquility should go up in the next time. So, that's how we're doing it. Uh, it with a, When a Shaman is in the group, I do... Oh, crap, I need to go this way, because I need to take care of the two dot classes. I'm not by Sish. Uh, okay, so... You kind of saw here that these two that were out in the side of the room were dot classes, and then the... The, the two direct damage go out over here, and the warrior this time with Sish went out to the green, so loaded by himself. And then, uh, usually when our our rogue is in the group, he'll stand here like where the claw spawns, and he'll cleave down the claw. When, and then when the boss comes out, he's like right there. Oh, by the way, I haven't used any mana cooldowns yet, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, like, sitting on that right now. I still have to use both of them. I'll probably do it once I make sure that my, uh, two classes that are out here, like, out by these two, like, the two dot classes are not gonna die anytime soon. I'm waiting for this buff to kind of fall around to three. That's where they're usually safe. And it's three. Now I'm gonna move in. Gonna get us some mana. There should be a dispel coming out here soon. Okay, so what I was talking about uh, with engineering, the hiccup with this is since this is an activate, it actually shares a cooldown with your trinkets, which is a problem. So, Beware. you know, if you do have a trinket that gives you like an active intellect proc, uh, that could be bad. Okay, so... I'm gonna take this, sorry. Melee out. Stand in the middle. Wow, we're killing him so fast these days that my barrier's not off cooldown. Pally's got it. So basically, um, like, your trinket 
if you have an intellect trinket, uh, now this is specific to like discipline priest, but it also works for pretty much any class who has that like primary, um, like primary stat bonus for crit for crit on their attack power, which is basically agility in, in classes. Uh, you kind of want to make sure that you're not like using like a two minute cooldown before your engineering proc because then you're waiting the duration of the um, two minute cooldown. So like if, if it's kind of like a, oh there's like big damage coming out, sometimes it's strategic to use your engineering proc before that big damage like and it's not going to be up for it. And then two minute cooldown will be up for it because then you're ensuring that uh, that one minute cooldown isn't like sitting off cooldown for more than 15 seconds, which is a huge loss. So yeah, um, now the reasons I went engineering. Like there's a couple. Uh, right now, like in this current before beta content, Rapture is affected by my intellect gains, and I have a percent multiplier when you spec discipline for specking Rapture. Fifteen percent. I thought it was twenty for a second, but no, it's fifteen. If you line up the procs together, like I have my power torrent proc showing, and I have my light reap from being a tailor showing. If I'm lucky, I can get two Rapture procs on both of those in chance. The engineering one is only 10 seconds, so there's no theoretical way to get two rapture procs off on it. But if I put it with these two, they'll stack multiplicatively and I can get just a little bit more mana back, like if I'm gaming rapture in that mannerism. Get out the right weapon here. Okay, so. The other reason I went engineering is because uh, next expansion there's this ability called Spirit Shell, you know, that Discipline's getting, and it's a, a one minute cooldown that just screams, like, you know, use your intellect proc with me off cooldown. Um, if I'm playing a perfect Archangel rotation, that's to use it off cooldown as often as possible, that means every 30 seconds, so every other Archangel rotation, I'll have this extra intellect. The extra intellect when I pop my engineering trinket will be more mana back when I pop Archangel, at least in current tier content. You know, next expansion is not going to be like that. So my justification for going engineering is as long as I'm playing correctly, I can sort of like game it better. Not much better, but like a little bit better. Um, I also really appreciate having this item as an engineer. Most people overlook this, but I've been playing a class that has had no proper inter interrupt for years. So I now have an interrupt by specking engineering, and I also have these boots. Uh, mobility, as of right now, unless you're wholly inspecting body and soul, not a whole lot of it, you know, to throw around, so that could be a problem. Ah, my stupid... My, uh, Leap of Faith is on cooldown, I don't even remember when I use that. So yeah, um, basically, if you're looking at, like, engineering as a viable profession, this intellect proc is really good situationally if you're kind of a class right now that has an active unused trinket it actually to me it's kind of like a detriment like it's kind of like a bad problem and if you're not the kind of person that's used to kind of like knowing when timings happen because i mean yes sometimes it's advantageous to like delay your intellect proc by being an engineer but you know it's not really that advantageous you kind of want to be using it off cooldown uh you know, if you're the kind of person that's like not good at that, then I would strongly encourage you away from engineering. And you know, the, the same logic applies for tailoring because it's a random enchant that you can't really control. It's like a proc per minute kind of thing, and sometimes it'll sit there and just like not proc for a minute and a half. So, you know, you you can play this dangerous game, but just be wary that these are the unfortunate circumstances should they befall to you. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about macro and micro tonight is because because I spec'd engineering, theoretically, if I know when damage is going to come out and it's going to be big and like predictable, I can really make use of this like on use because I have a trinket that randomly procs, but I'll substitute it in with a trinket that stacks spirit. So I have no active buttons to click except for this one engineering tinker. So, I mean, if you're on your A game, uh, you can really do some like crazy stuff and the first term kind of I want to talk about is like okay in StarCraft say there's like two ways to approach like your play um, macro and micro would be like two terms that you want to throw around with them in my mind like the macro of WoW is kind of like your strategy like how is is the fight like are you doing everything right um, another like macro would be are people reforged correctly um, you know another sort of like macro would be 
like are, are you doing the optimal rotation like does your uh, if you're a dps and you're like missing something really critical and you're doing like 10 percent less damage than you could that's like a macro problem in my mind micro would be all these little things that i've kind of been talking out over the weeks like uh switching out these weapons like weapon twisting or switching my two armor stances like inner will and fire um goodness like i don't even know um like i mean basically you kind of get what i'm getting at there like that that's micromanagement because that's like it's personal and it's small so yeah like yeah um micro in my mind is kind of like how are you doing personally like how are you like optimally playing or is there anything that you can do to like cheese an encounter i mean sometimes we'll encounter these classes where it's like oh Am I, like, optimally using, like, my immunities, like, Ice Mage, or, uh, the mages in their ice block and, like, paladins and bubbles? Like, you can do a lot of things cheesing that. Um, gosh, what's another one? Like, you could do a lot with, um, like, threat drops, kind of. Like, I mean, if you hit enrages, like, one of the strategies on Bail Rock, the world first kills, was just stack a bunch of hunters, because they could, um, they could kite kind of and like control threat with their taunts and they could also um um uh, swirling blades immunity whatever the crap that's called like they could they could do all these like cool little hunter tricks kind of to uh ensure that they're that they can like squeeze out just those few extra seconds after the boss enrages so there's like little micro like in my mind all that little tiny stuff that's micro oh yeah i have to spread out here herp -da -der. I got red. kind of playing like a holy priest right now um and that i'm kind of waiting for my cast to drop below 50 percent of his health like assuming he had like um like assuming i had te test of faith or something like that or uh, is it twist of fate or test of faith yes <laughs> the two talents that are going to confuse me now because they renamed it for the beta version of of this game like in mists but yeah twist of fate um is what the new version of that test of faith is called essentially I actually just made a mistake right here. Um, I forgot that I, I'm an engineer now, so I should have used my um, I should have used my tinker before I started channeling him of hope. You know, live and learn. Um, anyway, it, the way you kind of approach this fight differently, if you're uh, like a disc priest versus a holy priest, is instead of letting him go to like 50%, you kind of want to keep. Like you want to get the three stacks of grace on them ahead of time, and then you want to um, get a bubble up on them and try to like soak as much of that damage up front and not let their health dip too low. Yes, you are in the live stream. Hello, Honoros. Is that how you pronounce your name? What's up? But anyway, yeah. Um, I keep forgetting that I'm an engineer now, so I need to do extra things like click my my uh, glove tinker before I before I like do things like channel him of hope so I mean you're getting to see some cool mistakes tonight because it's the first time I've run as an engineer on this tune I do have engineering on another tune and I have played around with different you know buffs like temporary buffs like a lot of my tunes are herbalist so I try to maximize my haste buff a lot Um, and I haven't had to use my boots yet, but I'm really looking forward to using them. And something about the boots, I didn't know, I forgot about this actually, but in Firelands they buff the duration of your run speed on those nitro boosts. If you, like it used to be 3 seconds I think, but now it's 5. 
I was kind of looking at the the way that the new Divine Star ability works for priests, and like I was hoping that it would be a slow moving bolt, and so far that you could shoot the bolt out, and then you could kind of like run and direct it around and get it to follow you, because it has, I think, according to the tooltip, and this is like by tooltip, I haven't been able to test this to see if it works, but the 30 yard range for following you. So if you like shoot it in front of you, it goes 20 yards, but you can run 10 yards back the other direction and it can follow you that much. But I was kind of hoping it could follow you indefinitely, so if you had a speed boost, like body and soul, you could like make it zigzag or do things, um, well, the body and soul is like three seconds, and the bad thing about it is you have to spend an entire global cooldown after you fling the star to get body and soul up. Boots are off the global cooldown, so you can start running immediately, and it's five seconds, so you can run a lot longer than the um, body and soul buff from specking in that tier, uh, the movement tier. Another way to do it would be to drop a bunch of angelic feathers and somehow coordinate the raid from not running over them for you. Honoros, this is very cool because even though I am trying to play and I'm also trying to raid at a nerfed heroic level, but I'm trying to go through a previous itinerary, I can occasionally look at my chat log and see what people are typing to me. Anyway, um, to reiterate on a past stream that has gotten deleted, the way that the rest of the raid is doing the fight we just did, um, we usually have our rogue on the mana void, and what he does is on the first mana void we all use our mana cooldowns regardless of who you are, and then you, um, you take those cooldowns and, uh, they should be up by the time, like, a th the third iteration of things would come out and you can kind of use them off cooldown in that way and you shouldn't have mana problems especially now that content is nerfed the other thing that we did um, so okay um, the, what our rogue was doing on that whole time is he would be of course try to misdirect threat to me while I'm talking <laughs> thanks <laughs> um, our rogue would cleave, like he, he's combat, so he'd cleave the mana void and get it really low on health, and then would go, like, he, we would kind of, like, try to get it next to, like, when we first did that fight, we had a death knight, so we'd death grip it, like, the mana void next to the, next to the boss. So if you're having mana void troubles, that's, like, a strategy, because you lose a lot of DPS if you're, like, focusing the mana void as a group, it's better to kind of just, like, have one class that can cleave it. Um, when our rogue wasn't there, we kind of, like, made our, um, Either Shadow Priest or Warlock, someone who could do multi-dots, just like work it down. So that's our strategy with handling the voids, and then yes, what we do is we, we kind of eat the mana on the first one and just like let it sit at low health, and then when the second one spawns, we let the low health one, like we let the new one drain your mana fully, and then we just kill off the one that's at low health, and then we'll have another void up for the next time. So you see how that goes, there's always a void up. Um, the way we've been handling the the hard, the hard combo, which for us is, um, it's yellow, red, black, and green, is we kill the green, and that's when we use healer cooldowns and the four-piece tank set bonus. Like, that's where we use raid cooldowns, we roll them on that particular phase. And then otherwise, it's pretty much, like, always kill yellow if you can. Um, we usually always leave up black and we always leave up cobalt, if that kind of helps you. If you're kind of, like, struggling, which combos should I leave up? Um, it's always good to leave the purple up because if your healer team is coordinated it's really easy to just have them like pick a group and they take care of this one person like you know if, as long as you're coordinated like that it's it's really not that bad to let that buff up it doesn't do that much damage and then the black phase like those little ads even on clothies they can hurt but you know it's not like game changing I have a feeling I'm gonna run low on mana in this fight so I'm gonna equip this thing we also have a minute where we're uh, discussing the the lightning phase, but basically there's two terms I wanted to talk about uh, for micro and macro. I'm kind of like discussing the macro like in strategy wise how we do these fights. Um, there's a couple vids that I've done where I explain like how I did my reforges for these like on our server first. Like on this particular fight I reforged a lot of mastery 
and I didn't reforge spirit because you're we do like during the ice phase we run around in a circle instead of standing in the middle and just healing through the water damage on people so the run around the circle method saves a lot of mana um, so I didn't need spirit for this for this particular fight and I had to go discipline instead of holy I would have preferred holy for the divine hymn cooldown during the lightning phase but I did discipline so I just did mastery stacking for bubbles and then haste for fast flash heals because like once my bubbles were up basically I just like bombed the room with flash heals that's how I handled it so that's how we do this particular fight um, our tank couldn't take the like the focused assault that she does you can't take that if you're like a freshly geared tank so I had to be disciplined for two cooldowns basically the way we had the rotation is every other like every second, like after we come out of a phase, like even on this first part, every second focused assault is when my cooldown goes out, which is starts with paints up and then barrier. You kind of want to watch your timers if you're the one that's giving external cooldowns because you want to get those out before ice tombs go out. Because if you're picked for an ice tomb, you don't want to like miss that and then have the tank drop and get one shot because she'll just start wrecking people because you know those tombs will take out your DPS slash your healers, whatever. So it's just really bad. Um, and then. The way we do the ice lances that are coming in at the group is we just run around like idiots and try not to get too many <laughs> stacks. Like seriously, we don't have a good strategy for it. Um, we tried rotating like and having the melee being part of the rotation team. The best way we found is stack ranged, but if you unfortunately haven't been stacking ranged, um, your other solution is you can kind of like let them go through and hit the melee, and if the melee is sitting like, oh I don't know, is it three yards? I think if the melee is sitting three yards apart, then it's like okay. So, yeah. Um, and so, like right here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like just soak the the uh, bubbles wherever the um, wherever the debuff is like stacking to more than three is usually when I start like bubbling people. Uh, lightning phase means like this first part. I'm kind of like gonna. Well, I should be getting archangel stacks here, but I'm not. Once this thing starts getting low in health, just start bombing the room with uh, with your bubbles, and then once the bubbles are down, start bombing the room with flash heals. This is my strategy for handling this. I do try to keep like prayer mending out because since the lightning, like the pattern on it, it kind of like bounces between people. Um, I try to like uh, like when my my druid's in tree form right now, and when he's like, okay, this is going a little long, so I'm gonna blow divine him, but. You know, it, sometimes that goes quicker. You kind of have to gauge like what your other healers are doing. Um, we're two healing this right now, but when there's like a shaman here, uh, we kind of split it where he takes like he takes like one side of the room, and then I take like the other side of the room. So that's kind of like how we've organized it. Okay, right here, I'm I'm about to get picked by an ice tomb, so I'm putting paints up up early. Oh, sorry. I also was out of position a little bit too far away. Just there, like, um, something you can do as Discipline Priest is you can do Atonement through those Ice Tombs. You can also do, um, I think Tranquility and Beacon, if you were lucky enough to get the Beacon on the target who was about to get wailed on, if that makes sense. Five, four, three, two, one. Beware. Should be the water phase. I'm gonna try to run off with people who are straggling and kind of like by themselves. So right here, it's gonna be like um, these two. We need to catch up to them. Get off to this. No, I'll just dispel you here. Side mid. Kind of losing track of where people are standing. Can we get Raz up?
Okay, what I want to do for Raz here is I want to get him, uh, him a hope. <laughs> but, I don't know, unfortunately I can't do it because the healing is really intense right here and it looks like our group is taking way too many of these, <laughs> these uh, lances, but... Hopefully we can just drop this even though we have like three dead DPS here. Also, uh, this fight's gonna be like a little tight mana-wise. Like no matter what we try. Stay alive, stay alive. Five, four, three, Come on, two, just die, just die. One. Beware. Oh, shit. I think this is gonna be a wipe. Anyway. That was just really sloppy play on everyone's, like on everyone's part. M mine, mine too. Uh, there's only two of us. Can we have us like run in a unified group to the, um, the things we're killing on the frost part? Like I just, they, we were in like three groups and it was hard to get the spells off. Uh, basically, the reason we wiped there was like macro. It was a macro problem. Um, in our strategy, we had people taking like like upwards of like 11 of those ice lances, and there's very little I can do to keep someone alive during that. It's kind of like, um, like a pretty lucky we actually got as far as we did because we had we had some like people who were just taking way too many of those ice lances. And like I said. I don't know like an effective strategy for this. Um, there was a one point in time when we were doing this, like on our first couple attempts, and as a ten man, we're like, well, we could have groups of three people on a rotation. That kind of works, but I mean, you'd have to reposition to make sure that all three of the ice lances are going in a unified direction. Because, you know, if someone here gets like the debuff from this ice lance direction, and they're part of this rotation team, they're changing the way the beam shoots at you. If that kind of makes sense, like. Hard to illustrate, but you get what I'm saying. Um, basically, I, if you're having trouble with this fight and you're a 10 man, I mean, at this gear level or at this like level of the nerfs, you might just be able to cheese it with gear. Like, if you're having trouble with it and you haven't really farmed up as much gear, my new approach is like just, you know, do the other fights and <laughs> do the other fights in Dragon Soul and come back to this like later. Um, this fight is particularly punishing for 10 man raids. And I wish I, I wish I had like a good strategy for ice lances aside from stack ranged classes, so you have more fodder to throw in front of them. But we just don't. <laughs> we don't. So let's see. Oh, here's another one. Um, tonight it's kind of hard to see this, but uh, my tank, like, well, I guess basically I always run with a shaman, right? And um, that shaman tonight is missing, which means I'm the only one in the raid that's providing this buff inspiration. Which, um, it's also provided by Ancestral Fortitude, shamans bring that. So, that's, that's missing, and since our, my other healer is a druid, then, like, you know, the, he needs to, he needs to, Five, like, four, be three, mindful, I guess, well, I guess, one. The, way, the way I play off my druid in this is that if someone's sitting at low health, instead of like using a bubble preventively, I'll use it kind of like after they're sitting at low health, and it's to ensure that they um, they get their like I'll use a bubble basically if someone at low health to prevent them from dying, and then I'll let my druid use his hots. But then I also need to do extra babysitting on the tank because, like, uh, jeez, this is not easy to heal through. Jeez. I kind of wish we had that tranquility a little bit sooner, but I think he was holding off on it because... We're gonna lose like a ton of damage here, I think this is gonna be a wipe, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe it won't be. Beware. 
Anyway, um, if you... I know I said this once in one of my videos where I was showing off my UI, but this little shield at the bottom, that's my inspiration buff, and if the shaman's in the raid, it turns into Ancestral Fortitude. Because in my mind, Ancestral Fortitude is better than my inspiration buff, because Ancestral Fortitude also gives health, so I figure like that's something you probably want to show Five, more so. Four, three, two, one. Beware. Run to the same one. Dispel. I usually always just let Atriala take care of himself when it comes to things like dispels. I want Retro to be up here with me, so I'm just gonna life grip him up to me. I'm gonna try to get my mana back in this next one as well. Oh, um, something that... I, mean, I don't think I've ever said this before, but like when I see that my cooldowns are ready, sometimes what I'll do is I'll throw like a renew up to try to get one of those int procs to go, and like just then, I kind of like did it in so far that I saw that the renew... Like I tried to get a renew up um, right before that went out, and like right, right as we were running in, basically. Afraid my tank might die here. Inspiration's about to fall off, and my stacks of grace didn't like get refreshed there, so that's actually my bad for just being slightly behind. I wasn't that far behind, but I kind of like stopped paying attention because I saw that my Drew was about to get ice tuned. Five, four. Oh wow, he's already dead. And we did that with how to DPS. But yeah, um, Renew is a really good, like, just sort of fire and forget if you want to try to proc one of your intellect procs. So, like, when these two off to the side are cooled down, what it looks like in my UI is my icons have disappeared. I'll, like, throw a Renew on myself or just anybody, even if they're at, like, full health, and that's to try to get the int proc to go, because what I was going to do there is reset my mana bar. I was going to, you know, get my Renew on the uh, on myself and try to proc either of those int, int procs, and then, like, I'll use Mangineering Tinker throughout Shadow Fiend and do my Hymn of Hope. Uh, if you line up all of those things together, it's a 25% multiplier on all intellect effects times the um, the multiplier that you get from Hymn of Hope. Like when you get one tick, your mana bar is big, and your your Shadow Fiend is gonna be like doing some heavy returns, like like almost twice as much as it normally does. I can't imagine how powerful that's gonna be in the next expansion when we have a a little Shadow Critter that's only on a minute cooldown. <laughs> So tonight, I uh, uh, I was late getting here. I, I don't know. I might have to say something about starting at 6 o'clock because it's going to be like this next week, the week after, and then the week after. So like for the next three weeks, it's going to be really tight for me to get here at 6 o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, as always, I'll put the, the times, like I'll put the times on the little ads I throw out. Oh, and like speaking of just like getting, getting people interested in this, um, the like the way I kind of like prom promote this is I just kind of go out to like the general WoW forums. I mean, if you like the the point of my stream isn't to like boast EP or something. Like really, what I'm trying to do, like the ultimate goal here, is I'm just trying to like educate. Like I, I've been doing this for a long time, and the community that I've fallen into, which is the priest community, is really good about sort of like helping other people out. And I feel like. There's a lot of help out there for people who are new, or even people who, like, aren't new but just kind of need, like, little glances. Like, I mean, I play so many classes that one of the most helpful things for me is just, like, I need a, any, like, sites that just show at a glance, like, this is your basic rotation, this is your reforging, this is the glyphs, and spec, and, like, you know... 
I'm gonna solo ultra here. Um, so like that, that's like the, um, kind of forget what I was saying. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 um, gosh, shoot, I have no idea what I was saying just then. Yeah, I have no idea what I was saying. Someone remind me. Well, what I'm doing here, like, and the reason I got so sidetracked is I just had a thought, which was I'm solo healing Ultra, but it's kind of like consistent damage, and I just was like, oh, maybe I should tell tell him that I'm like an engineer now, and I don't really know how that's going to play out, but um, last couple of weeks, I was like doing mostly atonement for this fight instead of actually doing anything else, so I have a feeling it'll be fine. Oh, here's something I wanted to do. Uh, I kind of wanted to talk about, like, healing per second. I've done, like, a few weeks of this little stream here where I've demonstrated, like, all of the tricks that I have for saving mana, and one of, like, or actually two weeks in a row, what I did is I reforged, like, I was holy spec, and I reforged completely out of spirit to show, like, this is how I operate with zero mana. And I thought that was, like, a good exercise, but I've never done, like, a high throughput rotation. And the thing is, like, if you're competing with healing per second, sometimes I tone it back because if I'm too far out in front, that means that I'm going crazy with my absorbs and all that, and my other healers, like, I could use them a bit more, and I do raid with a shaman whose mastery is fantastic for things that fall lower and lower in health. So sometimes I intentionally, like, game with the health pools and make sure that he can get a little bit more throughput and I spread it out. That's a mana saving technique. Like, if you're healing one-on-one -on -one with someone, like if you're two healing a fight in 10 man, you can really get in the nitty gritty there because you can just constantly check each other's mana and make sure that's working out. What else can I say? So, yeah, something I wanted to do on this week is show, like, how how you can do, like, max throughput. Basically, how you do max throughput as a disc priest is, if you have the time, go into inner will, and then you want to bubble spam people if there's not a whole lot of damage going out, and then there's going to be a nuke of, like, damage, or if there's, like, a little bit of a downtime, and you just want to get out as many bubbles as possible. If there's not a whole lot of downtime and you're trying to get consistency, Prayer of Healing is your biggest throughput. And on fights where there's just like a pulse of damage, like Ultra we're about to do here is a damage pulse, nothing. Damage pulse, Prayer of Mending is actually a loss in healing per second, so it's better to just Prayer of Heal. And then um, when you look at your logs, like your recount, which usually you don't want to get... like I mean, I'm not saying that recount is bad or anything, just when you go through it, the percentages of your Prayer of Healing... If you're doing it effectively, like you're actually using Prayer of Healing to heal, that portion should be like about even with your Divine Aegis. If you're doing it preemptively, your overhealing should be insane. Like your your Prayer of Healing should be like almost 60 or 70 percent overhealing. Like I do this on Morchok, but Divine Aegis should be your top heal, and there shouldn't like there should be no ifs, ands, or buts about that. The macro in this fight is um, tanks roll your cooldowns because you have a shorter duration. We have a preset, like you can't see it's in our chat log, but we just make a quick macro that says who's standing out. I'm actually going to stand out in the second time and paint something myself, so that's kind of cool. I am, like, I know I just said, like, Prayer of Mending is a healing per second loss, um, I'm just using it now because, like, there's so little damage going out, and although it's a healing per second loss, um, it is an effective mana gain, so that's why I'm using Prayer of Healing at the beginning of this fight, if, like, it makes me more curious. Five, four, three, two, one. Beware. Oh, um, something else, I have a macro for this, let's see if I can find it, I think. doing something ballsy here. The clutch decision that I just had to make was um, Thank you. Five, four, three, 
Come on, live. Yes! So what I did there is I'm supposed to use pain sup and pain sup myself. I intentionally put pain sup on the tank because I needed to catch up on healing. The thing that you'll hear me throw around a lot um, if, if I'm ever actually strapped for healing for a second is that I like am falling behind on healing. What that means is like grace is falling off my tank, inspiration is falling off my tank, the raid is at low health and it's hard for me to recover like once the raid's at low health it's much easier to just stay on top of it with like a prayer of heal spam so what happened just then was like i fell like way behind on health and i um uh, in order to buy some time i put paints up on the tank even though he already had like another cooldown up so that's that's what i was thinking just now um, another thing I'm thinking right now is we I have two intellect procs and uh, my tank just threw out his four piece cooldown. Oh, crap. My tank just threw out his four piece set bonus. Um, so what I did is I just started stacking Aegis on both of the groups because I knew the Aegis wouldn't be fully consumed because there was a raid cooldown out that was reducing the amount of damage that was going out. Four, three, two, one. Beware. <laughs> Use that cut Uh, I don't have a cooldown for it. Let's just, yeah, let's just burn. Okay, I'm just gonna blow divine him here, even though I don't have the extra stacks from the uh, blue buff that just came out, because um, I want to stay in the red just for a little bit longer. Because although blue is like a technical bonus, um, right now my like what I'm thinking is like power infusion was um, was just off cooldown; it wasn't gonna come up again, and my um, my uh, my four piece like. Um, set bonus went out from a tank again and so like while that tank set bonus was out there um like i was kind of like taking it easy a bit and then like once it fell off it fell off and like the timing was that the blue was about to come out paint up was about to come off to cool down and i had this window where it's like i i knew that we we're gonna fall behind on health so in order instead of doing like max throughput and waiting for blue to come out and then doing divine him i just divine him with the red buff out and like just did like way less healing than I normally would and the reason I'm saying this is because divine him even though it says in the tooltip that it caps at a certain number of heals if you get the blue buff it doesn't like it totally just does like a nuke of five heals on people every like half a second or even even less than half a second because you have that crazy haste buff so that that's what I'm talking about when I say that um, so that's the decision making that I was doing just now that's like an example of micro decision making is like um I kind of like knew what was going on, but me personally, like this is like affecting me, and this is like an individual approach that you know you can't discuss ahead of time. It's like a like a react. It's kind of like the the thing that I like about like pushing rating to the very edge of stuff is that like you're we don't have Mark of the Wild. <laughs> huh? That would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, we were fine. <laughs> oh, like we had it in the last fight. I get it. <laughs> Never mind. For a second, I thought I just did that fight, like not fully buffed, but I'm I'm just being stupid. Anyway, so the way you do max throughput is a disc priest, and this is going to be really interesting in the expansion. Uh, stacking grace is good, but the things that grace aren't affected by are the atonement heals, and I think it's not affected by renew or prayer of mending. Um, it is affected by that little heal that the bubble does if you're glyphed, like if you have the glyph prayer of healing, this little upfront heal that it does is affected by grace. The absorb portion is not. So grace, like. Uh, something I see like Dis Priest doing to do max throughput is they're like, oh well, big damage is this going to go out, and I know Grace buffs healing on people, so what I'm going to do is try to like get Grace on as many people as possible. So I've like run with Priest before that flash heal, you know, just to get Grace stacks going. Hold that thought, like hold that playstyle until the next expansion when Grace actually affects all of your heals and absorbs. But for right now, it doesn't, so don't do that. Um, it's actually 
a bigger throughput if you just ignore grace altogether and just go bubble happy. Um, now, bubble happy works, I think, on four targets. That's the best, like, healing per second per mana. If you're gonna, like, do bubbles before a big hit, four targets. Or no, not four targets, what am I thinking? Six targets! Six targets in a 10-man. If it's more than six targets that's gonna be affected, you would have been better stacking through Prayer of Healing. And Prayer of Healing will gain a really wide swing of value if it crits. Like, if you crit with Divine Aegis, you're getting the guaranteed Aegis from the talent. See? Always gives you a shield if you use Prayer of Healing. But if you crit, you also get the crit portion of the Aegis, and it does two bubbles of Aegis on one target. So, crit on Prayer of Healing spam is like the biggest thing to... Like, if you have crit, that that can really swing the amount of healing it does if you're spreading it out. However, haste is the number one stat, because the faster you can get those Prayer of Heals out, and the faster you can stack Aegis, the better. It seems weird, because Mastery, which increases our absorbs, you want to have, like, mastery if you're bubble spamming with Power Ridge Shield, not with Prayer of hearing, Healing. So, you know, if there's a fight where you're bubble spamming, like this one in particular is a good one that I'm going to bubble spam a lot, I'll put up, um, when I was first doing it, I reforged Mastery and Spirit because that was, like, my primary heal. And um, the way I did a lot of those heals, like, is people are about to take the deck hit, like, the little purple swirls, mouse over them, and use this style of healing. Like, I'm healing people with mouse over... I don't know. Can you see this? Yes, I'm healing people with my with my mouse over heals instead of using my frames because it takes too long to find where they are and do that. Another tip, like for DPS, if I can ever get up here, is stand where Demon Lock is standing and DPS the dragons before combat starts. That way, if you get dots on them, like if you have full dots rolling on them, when they do land on either side of the deck, those dots keep ticking. Like they don't go away. They keep they keep flying around, and uh, by the time they land, they'll be at like 50% health, so that's just like a strategy. Five, four, three, two, one. Beware. Um, what I'm thinking of right now is that the tank who's taking the physical debuff doesn't have inspiration up, so I'm trying to, I just just trying to proc inspiration on him. That's just like an extra tidbit. Like, I really don't like, <laughs> I really don't like it when my shaman's not here because I really have to focus on inspiration because inspiration doesn't proc off of renew. Inspiration procs off of Riptide if you're a shaman. Like it's really stupid easy to keep up on targets because you pretty much want to be using Riptide as close to cooldown as you can and always like still follow the always be casting rule. So yeah, that's I mean it's it's something. Yeah, let's see, see like right here, like I'm I'm just trying to keep it refreshed on this target who's taking this extra damage and I'm just like not doing a good job. Uh, something about my weapon twisting for this fight. Um, you kind of like actually never want to go to the Maw of the Dragon Lord because even when Goriana comes down for the second part of this, you're going to be so spread out anyway, like in a cone shape, that it's, in my opinion, it's not going to affect enough people. Unless you're in like a 25 man, but if you're like in a 10 man like we are, you just want to keep out your Five, four, your other weapon if you're three, weapon twisting. Two, one. Beware. This is why it rocks being an engineer! Ugh, this is frustrating. This fire is like freaking everywhere and it's really ruining our group. Five, four, three. I can't even reach half the people in a raid right now. Beware. Okay, we let too many purple swirls drop, so our ship dropped in too much health. But 
like that's like a macro problem. Um, the biggest problem you're probably going to have, even in a 25 man on this group, is you want to um, make sure that you are trying to stand in every little tiny purple swirl that lands on the ship. If you are in like a decent eye level of gear, your stamina is high enough and the damage has been nerfed enough that you can actually solo stand in a lot of those flames, um, especially if you have any modified talents like um, right here in the druid tree, there's like a talent that reduces spell damage taken, like you can take that solo basically, and if you have bark skin it's even better. But um, yeah, before, <laughs> before the way we coordinated that was we had um, a partner that you had to just stand by the whole time so in my case it was always stand next to the other healer um, and then the two of us would always make sure that we're standing into one thing by ourselves and you never want to have like more than two people standing in one because if you get the debuff then there can be that confusion where you don't know like the person there has the debuff and they're gonna jump out of the purple swirl at the last second and leave you standing in it and you're gonna get one shot like that kind of confusion in order to avoid it or in order to avoid it just buddy up have like a buddy system one person stand with one person at all times and um, you know if like two people are already in a thing you want to avoid standing in it like that kind of thing so if you're having trouble in this fight that's like a strat that's the macro <laughs> Like I said, I really hate inspiration. Um, I'm glad they're removing this mechanic in the next like expansion because it's just an unnecessary buff that's frustrating to keep up. But um, like I'm, I'm concentrating on it. It's affecting my playstyle in the night that I have to work on keeping inspiration up. It is like a thing I have to watch for. It's not as critical that I keep inspiration. I mean, you want to ideally keep it up on both tanks at all times, but really what I'm trying to do is I'm keeping it on the tank who's taking that physical damage debuff, and that's showing up in my debuff's frame, like which is here, this bottom part of the frame is where the debuffs show up and the purple means that you have like that tank has the ad that does that cone of shadow aoe the little sword icon means that it's the the physical damage taken debuff and that's where you want to keep inspiration up on that tank oh here's something that um i wanted to say the <laughs> the video that I took down uh, was the video that I kind of briefly went over the hardware I use. If you're like WoW is one of those games that's so old that hardware gets really tricky. Like.